The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck continues. Tom moved cautiously forward. He saw the black form sitting on the ground, and he stole near and sat down. Uncle John tilted the pint, and the liquor gurgled out of the neck of the bottle. Tom said quietly, Hey, wait, where do I come in? Uncle John turned his head. Who you? You forgot me already? You had four drinks to my one. No, Tom, don't try fool me. I'm all alone here. You ain't been here. Well, I'm sure here now. How about giving me a snort? Uncle John raised the pint again and the whiskey gurgled. He shook the bottle. It was empty. No more, he said. Want to die so bad. Want to die awful. Die a little bit. Got to. Like sleeping. Die a little bit. So tarred. Tarred. Maybe don't wake up no more. His voice crooned off. Gonna wear a crown. A golden crown. Tom said, Listen here to me, Uncle John. We're gonna move on. You come along, and you can go right to sleep up on the load. John shook his head. No, go on. Ain't going. Gonna rest here. No good going back. No good to nobody. Just a dragging my sins like dirty drawers amongst nice folks. No, ain't going. Come on, we can't go unless you go. Go right along. I ain't no good. I ain't no good. Just a dragging my sins and dirtying everybody. You got no more sin than anybody else. John put his head close, and he winked one eye wisely. Tom could see his face dimly in the starlight. Nobody don't know my sins. Nobody but Jesus. He knows. Tom got down on his knees. He put his hand on Uncle John's forehead, and it was hot and dry. John brushed his hand away clumsily. Come on, Tom pleaded. Come on now, Uncle John. Ain't going to go. Just tired. Gonna rest right here. Right here. Tom was very close. He put his fist against the point of Uncle John's chin. He made a small practice arc twice for distance, and then, with his shoulder in the swing, he hit the chin a delicate, perfect blow. John's chin snapped up and he fell backwards and tried to sit up again. But Tom was kneeling over him, and as John got one elbow up, Tom hit him again. Uncle John lay still on the ground. Tom stood up, and bending, he lifted the loose, sagging body and boosted it over his shoulder. He staggered under the loose weight. John's hanging hands tapped him on the back as he went, slowly, puffing up the bank to the highway. Once a car came by and lighted him with the limp man over his shoulder. The car slowed for a moment and then roared away. Tom was panting when he came back to the Hooverville, down from the road and to the Jode truck. John was coming too. He struggled weakly. Tom set him gently on the ground. Camp had been broken while he was gone. Al passed the bundles up on the truck. The tarpaulin lay ready to bind over the load. Al said, He sure got a quick start. Tom apologized. I had to hit him a little to make him come. Poor fella. Didn't hurt him? Ma asked. Don't think so. He's a coming out of it. Uncle John was weakly sick on the ground. His spasms of vomiting came in little gasps. Ma said, I left a plate of potatoes for you, Tom. Tom chuckled. I ain't just in the mood right now. Pa called. All right, Al. Sling up the tarp. The truck was loaded and ready. Uncle John had gone to sleep. Tom and Al boosted and pulled him up on the load, while Winfield made a vomiting noise behind the truck, and Ruthie plugged her mouth with her hand to keep from squealing. All ready, Pa said. Tom asked, Where's Rosa Sharn? Over there, said Ma. Come on, Rosa Sharn, we're a-goin'. 
The girl sat still, her chin sunk on her breast. Tom walked over to her. Come on, he said. I ain't a-goin'. She did not raise her head. You got to go. I want Connie. I ain't a-goin' till he comes back. Three cars pulled out of the camp, up the road to the highway. Old cars loaded with the camps and the people. They clanked up to the highway and rolled away, their dim lights glancing along the road. Tom said, Connie'll find us. I left word up at the store where we'd be. He'll find us. Ma came up and stood beside him. Come on, Rosa Sharn. Come on, honey, she said gently. I want to wait. We can't wait. Ma leaned down and took the girl by the arm and helped her to her feet. He'll find us, Tom said. Don't you worry. He'll find us. They walked on either side of the girl. Maybe he went to get them books to study up, said Rose of Sharon. Maybe he was a-gonna surprise us. Ma said, maybe that's just what he done. They led her to the truck and helped her up on top of the load, and she crawled under the tarpaulin and disappeared into the dark cave. Now the bearded man from the weed shack came timidly to the truck. He waited about, his hands clutched behind his back. You gonna leave any stuff a fella could use? He asked at last. Pa said, can't think of nothing. We ain't got nothing to leave. Tom asked, ain't you getting out? For a long time the bearded man stared at him. No, he said at last, but they'll burn you out. The unsteady eyes dropped to the ground. I know, they done it before. Well, why the hell don't you get out? The bewildered eyes looked up for a moment, and then down again, and the dying firelight was reflected redly. I don't know. Takes so long to get stuff together. You won't have nothing if they burn you out. I know. You ain't leaving nothing a fella could use? Cleaned out, Slick, said Pa. The bearded man vaguely wandered away. What's the matter with him? Pa demanded. Cop happy, said Tom. Fella was saying, he's bull simple. Been beat over the head too much. A second little caravan drove past the camp and climbed to the road and moved away. Come on, Pa, let's go. Look here, Pa. You and me and Al ride in the seat. Ma can get on the load. No, Ma, you ride in the middle. Al, Tom reached under the seat and brought out a big monkey wrench. Al, you get up behind. Take this here, just in case. If anybody tries to climb up, let him have it. Al took the wrench and climbed up the backboard, and he settled himself cross-legged, the wrench in his hand. Tom pulled the iron jack handle from under the seat and laid it on the floor, under the brake pedal. All right, he said. Get in the middle, Ma. Pa said, I ain't got nothing in my hand. You can reach over and get the jack handle, said Tom. I hope to Jesus you don't need it. He stepped on the starter and the clanking flywheel turned over. The engine caught and died and caught again. Tom turned on the lights and moved out of the camp in low gear. The dim lights fingered the road nervously. They climbed up to the highway and turned south. Tom said, They comes a time when a man gets mad. Ma broke in. Tom, you told me. You promised me it wasn't like that. You promised. I know, Ma, I'm a tryin', but them deputies, did you ever see a deputy that didn't have a fat ass? And they waggle their ass and flop their gun around. Ma, he said, if it was the law they was working with, why, we could take it. But it ain't the law. They're a-working away at our spirits. They're a-trying to make us cringe and crawl like a whipped bitch. They're trying to break us. Why, Jesus Christ, Ma, there comes a time when the only way a fella can keep his decency is by taking a sock at a cop. They're working on our decency. Ma said, You promised, Tom. That's how pretty boy Floyd done. I knowed his Ma. They hurt him.
I'm a tryin', Ma, honest to God I am. You don't want me to crawl like a beat bitch with my belly on the ground, do you? I'm a prayin'. You got to keep clear, Tom. The family's breakin' up. You got to keep clear. I'll try, Ma, but when one of them fat asses gets to workin' me over, I got a big job tryin'. If it was the law, it'd be different, but burnin' the camp ain't the law. The car jolted along. Ahead, a little row of red lanterns stretched across the highway. Detour, I guess, Tom said. He slowed the car and stopped it, and immediately a crowd of men swarmed about the truck. They were armed with pick handles and shotguns. They wore trench helmets and some American Legion caps. One man leaned in the window, and the warm smell of whiskey preceded him. Where you think you're going? He thrust a red face near to Tom's face. Tom stiffened. His hand crept down to the floor, and he felt for the jack handle. Ma caught his arm and held it powerfully. Tom said, Well, and then his voice took on a servile whine. We're strangers here, he said. We heard about they's work in a place called Tulare. Well, God damn it, you're going the wrong way. We ain't going to have no goddamn Okies in this town. Tom's shoulders and arms were rigid, and a shiver went through him. Ma clung to his arm. The front of the truck was surrounded by the armed men. Some of them, to make a military appearance, wore tunics and Sam Brown belts. Tom whined. Which way is it at, mister? You turn right around and head north, and don't come back till the cotton's ready. Tom shivered all over. Yes, sir, he said. He put the car in reverse, backed around, and turned. He headed back the way he had come. Ma released his arm and patted him softly, and Tom tried to restrain his hard-smothered sobbing. Don't you mind, Ma said. Don't you mind. Tom blew his nose out the window and wiped his eyes on his sleeve. The sons of bitches. You done good, Ma said tenderly. You done just good. Tom swerved into a side dirt road, ran a hundred yards, and turned off his lights and motor. He got out of the car carrying the jack handle. Where you going? Ma demanded. Just gonna look. We ain't going north. The red lanterns moved up the highway. Tom watched them cross the entrance of the dirt road and continue on. In a few moments there came the sounds of shouts and screams, and then a flaring light arose from the direction of the Hooverville. The light grew and spread, and from the distance came a crackling sound. Tom got in the truck again. He turned around and ran up the dirt road without lights. At the highway, he turned south again, and he turned on his lights. Ma asked timidly, Where are we going, Tom? Going south, he said. We couldn't let them bastards push us around. We couldn't. Try to get around the town without going through it. Yeah, but where are we going? Pa spoke for the first time. That's what I want to know. Gonna look for that government camp, Tom said. A fella said they don't let no deputies in there. Ma, I got to get away from them. I'm scared I'll kill one. Easy, Tom, Ma soothed him. Easy, Tommy. You done good once. You can do it again. Yeah, and after a while I won't have no decency left. Easy, she said. You got to have patience. Why, Tom, us people will go on living when all them people is gone. Why, Tom, we're the people that live. They ain't gonna wipe us out. Why, we're the people. We go on. We take a beating all the time. I know, Ma chuckled. Maybe that makes us tough. Rich fellas come up and they die and their kids ain't no good, and they die out. But, Tom, we keep a comin'. Don't you fret none, Tom. A different time's comin'. How do you know? I don't know how.